here to talk about hand pollination in the cucurbita species and essentially this is a two-day process where we have to identify the flowers, tape them on day one and then pollinate them on the second day. So let's make sure we can recognize male flowers the day before they will open because in fact the day before they're open is when the taping will occur. This is in fact yesterday's flower. You can see that clearly, it's wilted. This right here is a male flower which will open tomorrow. When people first are learning how to recognize the flowers that will open the next day, what I call tomorrow's flowers, they often get confused between a tomorrow flower that has this obvious coloration already coming in and a certain ripeness and fullness that's hard to describe, but you will recognize it once you spend time in your squash patch on a regular daily basis at the time of pollination. And they often get it confused with what I call day after tomorrow flowers, which these two in the palm of my hand here are the day after tomorrow flowers. These just do not have the color of tomorrow's flower. The petals just really don't look like they're completely filled out and ready to burst open the next day. We have a beautiful example right here, the center of this plant, of a female flower, pistolate flower, that is indeed tomorrow's flower. Again, that color in the petals is a dead giveaway. But you can see the robustness, you can see the fullness of the blossom. You really get to know that this is something that's gonna burst open with life the next day. In contrast to that is the day after tomorrow's flower, and I'm holding in my left hand a female ovary pistolate flower of the day after tomorrow. So that one is not worth taping today for tomorrow's pollination activity because that one is not going to open for two days. And notice something, and this is really a wonderful thing to notice, that in fact you have different stages of the ovary development. And so the day before the ovary is decidedly better than the flower that will open in two days. Lastly, I'd like to make everyone aware that from a very early stage, here we have the apical growth of the plant right there, the newest growth, essentially. And if you look closely, you can see many little zucchinis. This little pistolate flower with ovary attached, you can already tell that's going to be a female, and that's at least three or four days out. Now I'd like to show everyone how to do the actual taping the day before the pollination events occur. This is all about excluding any pollinating insects, especially bees, but in fact there are many other pollinating insects that can get in and do the pollination event. We always use a good grade of masking tape. We're looking at a female flower here, and first I'm showing you with one that's off the plant so you can clearly see. We put the tape no more than about halfway down the petals. And that'll be important because we have to have petals left over after the pollination event in order to close the female flower back up. The first technique that I'm using where I've crimped off the ends of this piece of tape, in fact, is to try to keep all of the petals so that you have the entire corolla, which is the uniform body of all of the petals, fused together, you have the entire corolla intact. So what I would do then, I bring it around nice and tightly and I close it off. Notice that half the tape is above the top of the petal cone. This is why I also like to use this wide of a masking tape. So next I'd like to show you one more time on a real growing flower as you would do it. Folding that over a little bit and just coming onto this female flower. The night before, we're about halfway down the petals. We want to make sure we capture all of the tip inside the tape, and we want to tape that shut. So not only are you taping side to side here, but then the last thing you always do is you pinch that on top. Make sure there's a little tape on top, because sometimes insects can get down in there.
if the flower is robust enough the next day, it will be pulling so hard to open, because that is what in fact it needs to do, that it will tear apart. And we will show you how that sometimes can be a problem. So now we're coming back the next morning. We grab our little tabs that we created. We pull that open. That will be bursting open the next morning. Then we can make our pollination event. Then we take an entirely new piece of tape. Of course, if this was open in the morning, it would be much more open. Now, we don't have to worry about tabs when we're retaping. We just now want to get it taped so it's absolutely shut and there's no insects coming in after our taping event to add more pollen. So you have to tape it shut and oftentimes I'll just go ahead and take a couple of pieces of tape because I want to make absolutely sure that that flower is closed to any more foreign pollen outside of what we want to do. A diversity issue that comes up when you're doing hand pollination in squash is to make sure that you're taking male flowers from different plants within that same variety than you're pollinating. You're going to try to avoid a self-pollination by taking a male flower from the same plant that you are pollinating the female. Try to mix it up. So I just go through the patch, collect a number of males, the male flowers, you, you pull them right off the plant because you're just going to use them for their pollen and then discard them. And what I do is I go through and for this one pollination, I've collected now four male flowers. So here's how we prep them. Again, this is really technique two of flower taping. I just can rip this off because with the male flower, I do not need to keep any of the petals intact. In fact, what I'm doing is I'm slowly, carefully peeling all of the petal material off. In fact, you want to peel it all the way down to the bottom of the corolla so you have beautiful little, essentially little paint brushes. Here's a wonderful example that even with the best of techniques, Nature still finds a way to do cross-pollination. And in fact, here we have a male flower. Lo and behold, some insect here in the garden bore a hole through the petal and got in there. You don't know if that insect has already visited other flowers and could have contaminated. So when you find something like a hole in the petals where nature's trying to get in and do a pollination event, at that point, that's a potentially contaminated flower and you should not use it for hand pollination. Here is a female flower on the Lower Salmon River that was taped last evening. It has not been open to the world. It's beautifully receptive at this point. And because we have enough petals on this, nice long petaled Cucurbita maxima, we're using technique number two where we're just going to pull the tape off and take about half of the petals with us. Here's a bee. See, I've got to fight him away because once you let them in, they're bringing pollen from potentially another variety and defeating the purpose of what you're doing here. So, what I do is then take one of these males that have been trimmed. This, these anthers are full of pollen, hard to see, but there's a little fluffy pollen on my finger there. So I know there's plenty of pollen. Now I reach in and I daub that pollen right onto the stigma, the female or pistillate flower. The receptive part to the pollen is in fact called the stigma. And so you're rubbing pollen as much as you can get off of each of these anthers all over that stigmatic surface. You want to just make sure you get pollen is evenly distributed across all four lobes of the stigma and covering as much of that stigmatic surface as possible. Now it's time to close the female flower. Very important because if we left it open like this, 
there'd be all sorts of potential for cross-contamination. We pull a piece of fresh tape very gently. If you do this too roughly, you can knock the flower off of the ovary. We want to make sure to get the tape down low enough so that we really close up this whole area. Again, the tape has to cover the petal about halfway. So there's half tape showing, half tape adhering to the petals. And then we gingerly, gently close it up like this. Always leaving a little tape on top to pinch it shut. No chance of entry. Not pinching too hard against the petals or you can rip the petals. They're fairly delicate. And so there we essentially have it. Nice tight package. And I will go ahead and use one more little piece of tape. Gingerly doing this, if you press too hard, I've done it. Everyone who learns how to do this knocks a certain amount of the flowers, the petal and flower parts off of the ovary. Then you'll never get a pollination. Gingerly doing that, not pinching too hard. Perfect. Once you have taped it, for the first couple of days, it's easy, easy to tell that this flower has been pollinated and is taped shut. But what is going to happen is these petals will fall off, leaving a blossom scar, and there'll be no way to tell that this was hand pollinated. So at this point, it is very important that you use something to mark this fruit, some kind of tag. And so all we want to make sure we do is put something that is both flexible, something that will not melt away in the sun, plastic or metal preferably. It's nice to use something at least this long and I'll show you why. When we put this around, we want to put it around the stem, the peduncle of that particular flower. Once you put it on there, it won't unloosen. But notice here, we don't want to put it any tighter than about that. If we put it too loose, it might fall off. But if we put it too tight, we will constrict the vascular tissue in that fruit stem and potentially damage developing fruit. Because here on a Cucurbita maxima squash, that stem to that squash is going to get at least as big is a quarter, if not the size of a 50 cent piece in its full development. So you see how I've left a big enough loop there to compensate for that. This is maintaining this variety forevermore until that fruit is completely ripened. We know that this was a hand pollination just by putting a zip tie there. At that point we have completed the process essentially. Now it's all up to Mother Nature to allow this to ripen.